Hi, now we'll watch a video clip, a short video clip where Dawkins answer a question from a British Muslim, no, Sunni. Not really Muslim because Muslims follow the Quran, respect the Quran, follow the Quran alone. The only book delivered by Prophet Muhammad. Not Hadith books, hearsay stories fabricated two, three, four hundred years after Prophet Muhammad. No, but this gentleman who is asking the question, he is following all those uh, false teachings and uh, <clears throat> he's asking a question and uh, Dawkins, he has a straw man and he punches him. One punch is enough. <laughs> he's knocked out. And this was shared uh, by a Turkish gentleman who put Turkish subtitles Therefore, you don't need to be distracted by the subtitles. They're in Turkish, but you can hear. I will let you watch first, and I may interrupt a little bit, and uh, you will see very interesting conversation. There is a cheap victory by Dawkins. Unfortunately, he gets this cheap victory against charlatans like uh, um, who is it? The guy who is uh, promoting kind of supposedly creation story. Uh, in Muslim countries, a uh, cult, uh, in fact, uh, copying exactly the Christian uh, stories uh, uh, against uh, the theory of evolution. Anyway, let's hear this guy and uh, the questions. I'm going to focus on it. So our next question comes from in the audience. It's from Hamza Qureshi. My question is for Professor Dawkins. Considering that uh, atheism cannot possibly have any sense of absolute morality, would it not then be an irrational leap of faith, which atheists themselves so harshly condemn, for an atheist to decide between right and wrong? Absolute morality. The, the, the absolute morality that a religious person might profess would include what? Stoning people for adultery? Okay. Now, what do you think? Does it have anything with Islam? With the Quran, the only book delivered by Prophet Muhammad? Nope. The relation is zero. Therefore, he thinks he is criticizing Islam, but he's <laughs> throwing the rock to the wrong direction. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, because I, uh, I see this video is uh, circulated among atheists. Oh, here is a victory against Muslims on morality. It's not against Muslims. It's against Sunnis, the enemies of Prophet Muhammad, because they followed the stories fabricated by the enemies of Prophet Muhammad. In chapter six, verse um, hundred twelve and two hundred sixteen, we find out it's exactly described how the enemies of Prophet Muhammad make up stories and words and attribute to him and then the following answer is very interesting rejects all their excuses to fabricate those stories and many verses in the Quran says the Quran is enough the Quran is fully detailed is complete is is sufficient for guidance and God doesn't forget but the ulama who later want to fabricate another religion, they distorted all these verses, they ignored those verses, they started fabricating stories. In fact, hadith books were not written during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Neither for presidents, elected presidents, you call it Khulafa or Rashidin. Hmm? Eh? <laughs> Bukhari comes 230 years after Prophet Muhammad he start hearing people and Picking and choosing according to his silly, stupid standards, whatever standards, he ended up with a bunch of contradictions, silly stories. And according to his own confession, he throws away 99%. According to him, he collected, he heard 600,000 hadiths, which is a huge number. It is another lie. And then he has about 7,000 uh, 215, something like that, but a little bit more than 7,000 hadiths in his books. Hmm. More than 98% he trashes. And what he ends up? <laughs> With pile of garbage. Anyway, here it is. This is a straw man argument. This gentleman 
is saying, well, stoning to death. Is it morality? Well, this has nothing to do with the Quran. Let's hear the rest of it. Death for apostasy. Uh, this is another false criticism. Or he, I don't accuse uh, Dawkins, by the way. I don't find fault because he has no idea about the Quran. He thinks the Quran needs those books as the lawyers, these um, <coughs> uh, ignorant uh, scholars, they claim religious leaders. Death to apostasy, just the opposite. The Quran says there is no compulsion in religion. You cannot force anyone. Let whoever choose to trust the truth, acknowledge the truth, let them acknowledge the truth. Whoever reject, let them reject. Very clear verses of the Quran. In fact, it is even beyond many uh, modern, the freedom of expression, beyond many modern um, <clears throat> uh, law. For example, chapter 4, w verse 140. If you hear someone is making mockery of your system, your paradigm, your philosophy, your way of life, leave them, says Dean means that. Religion people use the word religion, stupid kind of rituals and stuff. No, it is way of life, thinking. And uh, if they make mockery, the, the Quran says, leave their presence and then when they come to their senses, go back, continue your arguments, your discussions. Aha! Uh -huh. Doesn't say beat them, yell at them, nothing. Say peace and leave them. And then don't keep distance all the time. Don't kind of <laughs> leave them all the time. Be a good friend, go ahead, again discuss. As long as they don't attack you, kill you, you have no right to fight them. They have no right to punish them because of their expression of their belief. How abhorrent it is, even how you may disagree, the only thing you should do, ignore them. You don't listen to them. That's it. Because they are not in the mode of discussion issues. They have all the right to reject. You should discuss with them because Quran f is filled with dialogues, with ingrates, with disbelievers, with polytheists, with hypocrites, dialogues of all the prophets, messengers in the Quran, full of dialogues. There are about 332, they said, they said, and 332 instruction, you say this, you say that. Hmm. Dialogue, that means you should be able to engage dialogue with anyone, including atheists, agnostics, Christians, whoever even Satan worshippers. But when start making mockery, making mockery means they are not really interested in finding the truth or discussing the issue. They just make perfect, leave them alone. That's it. And this gentleman is criticizing what? Not the Quran, not the Islam. Islam means making peace. Salam, shalom, the same root. Islam making peace, making peace with yourself, with God with your family, with people, with, with the world, with the planet. That's it. Okay, let's continue. Punishment for breaking the Sabbath. This is again nothing to do with the Quran. God may punish people for their aggressions, but it is not our job to punish people in the name of God for their choices if it doesn't hurt us for their moral violation of moral rules that we uh, hold dear, we have no right to punish people for that. Therefore, this again has nothing to do with the Quran. Three things. Stoning to death, nothing to do with the Quran. The straw man argument. Killing the apostates has nothing to do with the Quran. Punishing people for Violating Sabbath, unfortunately, it is included in the Old Testament. They kill people for violating te te Sabbath, which is absolutely horrendous. This is the biggest crime to kill people without justification. There are two ex exceptions. One is if someone is attacking you 
is trying to kill you or your, your people, then you defend yourself against them. In that fight, you may kill them. It's not something desirable. But unfortunately, to save your lives, you have to defend against aggressor. The other is, is someone already killed someone. Based on justice, that person may be killed. There are limitations. Qasas. 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 Is in fact limitation. It is distorted by Sunnis. There is default the, the limitations. And after that says, if the victim family, they forgive, should be forgiven. In fact, it is better for them to forgive. Therefore, the Quran is protecting the lives of people. Anyway, let's continue. Which are religiously based absolute moralities. I don't think I want an absolute morality. I think I want a morality that, that is thought out, reasoned, argued, discussed, and... And beautiful. I agree with that. And I don't think at all that reasoned morality will have any contradiction with the teaching of the Quran. We'll find out. And I'm ready to discuss with this gentleman. He is good at uh, discussing, debating this issue with straw men people. But let's see. Based upon, I could almost say, intelligent design. Lovely. <laughs> Can we not design our society which has the sort of morality, the sort of society that, that we want to live in? If you actually look at the, the moralities that are accepted among modern people, among 21st century people, we don't believe in slavery anymore, we believe in equality of women. Um, slavery anymore? Okay, continue. Equality of women, what else? We believe in in being gentle, we believe gentle. in being kind to animals. These are all things which are entirely recent. Big lie. Entirely recent. He found straw man and he's making up. Slavery. The Quran categorically rejects slavery. It is in fact idol worship. Anyone claims to have a slave is considering claiming to be a god. Lord. Rab. Rab means the Lord. Only God is Lord. The Quran says there is no Lord besides God. Erbabun ma'Allah. Rhetorical question. There are many verses. In fact, Pharaoh is condemned because he claimed to be the Lord of some slaves. He enslaved people. Therefore, having a slave is tantamount to, tantamount to claiming that I am Lord. Because Lord, Abd. If you are claiming someone is your abd, means your slave, you become the slave owner, which is in Arabic, is rab, in English, lord. This is shirk, this is polytheism. This is violation of number one principle of Islam, which is the system delivered, promoted by all messengers of God from the beginning. Uh -huh. Therefore, slavery cannot never be accepted by Islam. You can say, Adib, the Quran has the word slave. Yeah? The Quran talks about idol worshippers. It, it means, uh, uh, <laughs> endorses them, talks about those who commit adultery. Does the Quran endorse them? Or about thieves? Does the Quran endorses them? No. Uh, the Quran talks about the rich people who do not take care of the poor people. Does the Quran endorses the rich people? No, because the word mentioned in the Quran doesn't mean Quran. There's just the opposite. There are slaves around the world, Christians that time, Jewish people, and uh, polytheists. They had slaves, and Muslim could not by force did not have enough power to free those slaves by taking them by force. Therefore, the Quran tells them, if you do this, do that, do any wrong things, one of the things you can do as a ticket, as a compensation for your uh, misdeed, go free a slave. Give a Christian money, free the slave, or a polytheist, take their slaves and free them. That's it. 
But later, during Umayyad and Abbasid time, many great progressive principles of the Quran was just made topsy-turvy through hadith, through sectarian teachings. And slavery is one of them, one of the worst. Therefore, according to the Quran, Mr. Dawkins, according to the Quran, slavery is the worst crime, like killing a human being, because it is polytheism. It's claiming to be a pharaoh. Okay? And what was the next one? He was saying, there are new things. Equality of women. Goodness sake. Again, woman's right was taken back afterwards through hadith, hearsay stories, and sectarian teachings. For example, chapter um, 4 is all about protection of women. Chapter 49, verse 13. Read it. Read it. Chapter 49, verse 13. Men and women are equal. The only superiority says is not because of your colors and tribes or male and female. Superiority is based on righteousness. Whoever does good things, that person is better. That's it. You may say cherry pick two verses in the Quran and distort it through false assumptions. Criticize the Quran, I am ready to defend those verses. One is about testimony, the other is about um, uh, what well, inheritance. These two things again distorted. Or about polygamy. These are three issues and I would like to discuss with you. Let's see whether it is universal, whether it is rational or not. Dawkins. Okay, let's listen to the rest. Or being kind, it is not in the Quran, huh? <laughs> or being nice to animals, it is not in the Quran, huh? While the Quran talks about, the, in fact, treats the dog as one of the members of the group, Seven Sleepers, well, kind of known story, but it is a very interesting uh, topic. It is very different than what today's Muslims or Christians think. It's very interesting uh, um, example in the Quran. Uh, it is another thing, inshallah, later we'll talk that the Quran treats the dog, one of the members of the group, and he was sleeping, the dog, he, I say, she or he or it, was sleeping together with them in the cave. Well, cave is a metaphor for secret. It is very interesting, secret, mysterious uh, uh, metaphors there. It is another issue, but where in the Quran says treat animal badly? Huh, not eating animals? This is a different story whether we should not eat animals, then uh, that's, uh, it is a worse argument I would like to discuss because many people who are so-called civilized, perhaps Dawkins, to eat animals. Or being kind. Okay. But he's right in terms of his criticism because I, I don't accuse da Dawkins. He's criticizing, uh, in fact, Sunni and Shia religions and thinking that they are Islam, and he doesn't know. And unfortunately, these uh, religious leaders are uh, promoting the religion of Abu Lahab or Abu Jahil as the religion of Muhammad. What they depict Muhammad in their hadith books and teachings, in fact, they are the portrayed qualities of Abu Jahil, Abu Lahab mostly. Let's see. Dawkins. They're doing a good job, but again, it's the straw man's. Oh, by the way, this is very delicious. This is very there delicious. Are there are things that have developed Tangerine. in historical time through a consensus of reasoning, sober discussion, argument, legal theory, political and moral philosophy. Lovely. You do not come from religion to the extent that you can find the good bit okay. in religious scriptures, you have to cherry pick. You, you search your way through the Bible or the Quran and you find the occasional verse that is a, an acceptable profession of morality. You say, look at that, that's religion. Just the opposite. 
I say just the opposite. You will cherry pick in the Quran, take few verses, only few verses you can work on it, take it out of context, distort it through Sunni stories that only you will do. Okay? Therefore, please, let this guy know, everyone who listen to this, send him a letter. Here is Edip Yüksel challenging you. I have two discussions you can watch, one with the president of American Atheist Organization, David Silverman. It's a beautiful discussion. You can watch that one. And also another one uh, with uh, Michael Shermer, the president of uh, uh, Skeptic Society and uh, founder and editor of, uh, publisher and editor of Skeptic Magazine. And he also writes books and articles in Scientific American. I also a debate with him. That debate is in the first section of the documentary called Running Like Zebras. Watch that one. And then please let him know, say, Edip Yüksel, you are very good. You declare victory against this poor British uh, Sunni who has no clue what he's talking about. Here is Edip challenging you. Talk about philosophy, about God's existence, about evolution, and if you really want, about the Quran. It seems he's comfortable criticizing the Quran. Okay? And I like this guy. I have no problem with him because unfortunately he has no clue. He <laughs> like the Sunnis about the Quran because uh, they are, uh, the Quran is perhaps the most read book. But unfortunately, because those who read, they don't use their reasoning, they betray their reasoning, is the least understood book and the most betrayed book in the world. Um, but the thing is changing. There is a new era. The new era started in 1974. Some of you have heard that. And there is a great change and transformation and reformation movement. And uh, Dawkins, inshallah, one day will sit we'll discuss this issue together. Therefore, after this one, please send an email to Dawkins, find his site, and send his mail. Here is Edip. My um, email address, I will not tell you, but it is, uh, you can find it at 19.org. Um, let him know my email address and can reach me through my phone. can find my phone. He should be able. He's smart enough to find my phone. Uh, well, Edip, why you are not smart enough to find his phone? Well, my phone is not secret. I think his phone is secret, but I can find his phone too. But uh, I think he's uh, <clears throat> uh, been more uh, popular and known. Uh, he may not pay attention, but if you send him emails and uh, or make you short YouTube on this issue, Dawkins versus a deep cell. Where are you, Dawkins? That would be nice. Why not? Let's do that. Okay. This is fantastic, intelligent design. Tangerine. I highly recommend. Recommend what? Everyone knows about that. Peace.